One of the best ways to see a lot of birds is to visit a variety of habitats. Wetlands, farmland and woodland all contain quite different species. So when visiting Sri Lanka, I found myself drawn to a location that had all three and the result was fantastic. Hello my dear friends, I'm at Tissa Maharama in southern Sri Lanka and it's one of those places where there are birds everywhere. Large water birds are abundant in this habitat, none larger than this spot-billed pelican. Spot-billed pelican is fairly common here, but black-headed ibis is possibly the most numerous large water bird at Tissa Maharama. Black-headed ibis is an adaptable bird which can be found in a variety of natural and man-made wetland habitats. While in decline in many countries, black-headed ibis is doing well in Sri Lanka. I often think how obvious the link between dinosaurs and birds is when watching large water birds like these, particularly this oriental darter with its serpentine neck. Eurasian Spoonbill's incredible bill always makes it a fun bird to watch feeding. And this is another species that is fairly plentiful in the wetlands of Tissa Maharama. And, for vigilant birders, unusual water birds sometimes make an appearance. Bodies of water like these attract kingfishers. White-throated kingfisher is by far the most abundant kingfisher here, but somewhat eclipsed by the impressive stork-billed kingfisher. Just look at that bill. It's not just wetland birds at Tissa Maharama. Large trees host many arboreal birds too. Most obviously, ringneck parakeet. Nesting in cavities in big trees, ringneck parakeet has been introduced to many countries, but here in Sri Lanka, they are a native species. These two are pair bonding before selecting a suitable hole to nest in. Trees of this size are a magnet to woodpeckers, like this red-backed flameback. The ringneck parakeets often nest in old woodpecker holes, but the woodpeckers make a new hole every year. They have the perfect tool for the job. This isn't the only woodpecker attracted to the trees in this habitat. White-naked woodpecker is found in India and Nepal as well as Sri Lanka and although its dagger-like bill is ideal for excavating holes, it is surprisingly dexterous for finding food too. A third species of woodpecker, yellow-crowned woodpecker, is more scarce and found in the dry, scrubby woodland around villages here. Other species here include brown-headed barbet, orange-breasted green pigeon, and crested hawk eagle. But it's not just birds that live here. The owner of the hotel I'm staying in told me, come and find these big rain trees and look for some flying foxes. I wonder if I can spot them. With this many fruit bats, it wasn't exactly a game of hide and seek. This is Indian flying fox, the world's largest bat. They feed at night on fruit, but can still be active with other business in daylight.
One species you can't help but see here is yellow-billed babbler. Indeed, anywhere in Sri Lanka, you just sit down for a rest in a place like this, and a gang of these garrulous birds seem to turn up sooner or later. Yellow-billed babbler is frequently found alongside humans. Although they forage in groups, a sentinel will often sit alone on a perch and noisily communicate with the birds feeding on the ground. They are particularly vigilant when they have young. This one is a bit of an ugly duckling. House crow is another bird here that is comfortable around humans, as the name suggests. These adaptable birds take advantage of food discarded by humans, resulting in very high numbers of crows. Rice fields provide another habitat and some memorable views. And within the rice, some interesting birds are hiding, including the magnificent Indian peafowl. This is the peacock most people know from zoos and parks, but seeing this fabulous bird in the wild is something special. At Tissa Maharama, Indian peafowl is a fairly common sight, but spectacular nonetheless. Amazingly, white-naped woodpecker also manages to find a feeding niche in this habitat. Old fence posts contain insect larvae just as well as old trees do. A little harder to see is the tiny ashy prinia. This little bird makes a living hunting for small invertebrates within rice fields and other waterside vegetation. Meanwhile, back at the lake, birds like black wing stilt are probing for invertebrates in the shallows. Wading birds like this have bills adapted for specialist means. Long bills for probing into soft mud and water and shorter bills for snatching prey on drier ground. This yellow wattled lapwing isn't adverse to rummaging around in elephant dung to find a meal. Pheasant-tailed jacana's short, thin bill is perfect for picking food items from floating vegetation and the water's surface. Although it was nice to see many of the common birds, there were a couple of rarer waders that I was keen to see, so I was very pleased to find a few great thick knees. While doing quite well in Sri Lanka, great thick knee has declined in much of Asia because of habitat destruction. Indian thick knee is more widespread, but still a great bird. I photographed a lot more birds than I videoed, so here are a few of the best photos. Yesterday morning, I came to this area and I saw a grey-headed fish eagle. Unfortunately, I didn't have my tripod, so I couldn't video it properly. But I really wanted to show you this magnificent bird. So I came back this morning and I managed to get even better views than I did yesterday. Grey-headed fish eagle has a wide range in Asia, but a common bird in few places. In Sri Lanka, however, they are a familiar sight around shallow irrigation reservoirs, known locally as tanks, giving this magnificent bird the nickname Tank Eagle. It was very pleasing to find the grey-headed fish eagle again. Birdwatching doesn't always work out like that. If you like big raptors like that, 
watch this video next.